It's about 30% new oak. Yeah. And one and two. Yeah, yet again, it <clears throat> proves that um, the Shiraz Sirat God kind of attended Australia and Sirat to get together. Mm -hmm. It just took a while. Yeah. I mean, how many different regional interpretations are there now, Jeff? Australia. Put your husband on the spot. There'd be, it's probably, I don't know, how many would there be? Fifteen? Yeah, yeah probably that many now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, from the cool climate right yeah. through to the warm, to the Barossa, sort of heady, McLaren, heady Vale. McLaren Vale and Barossa. Mm. Well, that's right, I mean, think of that. Fifteen different interpretations of one variety yeah. in one country. I mean, is it, that's unique, so it has to be. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Yes, and, and the more it becomes, it, the, the less it's rather, the less it, it's style driven, the more you're going to get real, real variations. Well, I mean, there's such a huge variation yeah. between the cool climate and, and the, always was, the warm climate. Bit, there always was, but it's probably magnified. You get less of these big, big companies trying to. And I think, I think people are looking for more elegant wines anyway, and, and you know, um, and big Barossa Shirazes, I guess, have a place, but I find them a bit overpowering. To, yeah. You know, I can have a glass, I enjoy a glass, but I don't know if I can drink a bottle or something. Yeah. Andrew Jefford, very interestingly, in the um, July edition of Decanda 2009, he, um, in, one of, in his summary article of his 15 months in Australia oh, yeah. on this subject, he reminds everybody that the reason Shiraz was planted around Adelaide was at the time there was no demand for table wine. Mm -hmm. So the guys making fortified wine mm -hmm. found in Shiraz a variety that was vigorous, mm -hmm. it was a little like Chardonnay, a bit of a grower's friend, mm -hmm. and produced uh, quite a lot if you just... Don't yep. prune it too hard. A fruit that gets ripe quickly, high sugar level, tastes sweet, very good uh, base wine for fortified. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. that's why it's there. If you want to make table wine there, he's suggesting maybe there are other varieties that are better okay, suited. I see. Yeah. Perhaps, I mean, like. So, what do you say, Barossa is too hot? <laughs> Essentially. Wait. Maybe it should be growing Tempranillo or something. Yes, exactly, exactly what he's saying. <laughs> but also, it's interesting, maybe Matara <coughs> It's a bit the story of Napa Valley. I mean, Napa Valley was a great place where Italians, no, they sure. wanted fruit, you got mm. it every year, mm. no mm. problem. So you want an easy life, you went to the Napa Valley. Right. Mm. And the fact they've actually produced half decent wine is a real... Amazing. Yeah, you've got you, you to think, well, these guys are really clever, mm. because it's not easy. Mm. You've got deep alluvial soils and lots of heat. <laughs> they sort of... But the great advantage, I mean, they, yeah. something great about the fact that Syrah was introduced yeah. So early in uh, Australia mm. is that now you know you have more you have genetical uh, uh, varieties that that are in Australia that 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 disappeared in France with the Pinot yeah. Noir crisis. Yeah. And unfortunately, with Pinot Noir, we don't have that. No, Pinot Noir was not introduced mm. soon enough worldwide. Yeah. So we could maintain that uh, genetical diversity. Pascal, let me tell you a story. To pick up on your ball, if you throw the ball to me, Les Bleus to the Wallaby, if I'm showing this wine I mentioned before that comes from this old vineyard site in Colburn, yep. I call it Aristea. If I'm showing this wine in London to some of Simon's French customers. Yep. They start off, okay, because the salesman is a friend, we have to look at another Australian, you know, Australian one. You know. <laughs> so, I'm, so I just don't say, I say nothing. I don't mean. So they taste it and they go, it's from Australia? No, it's uh, not tutti frutti. This is what they always say. How can it be from Australia? So then I tell them about the history of the vines, and you can see the lights go on on this sort of Parisian sommelier. He's saying, so there is a direct connection, you know, with the, um, you know, the altar of, Fre of Syrah in France. Sure. Mm. And these are on their own roots. Yep. And yeah. so on. It's something that I don't know about no Yeah, and all of a sudden, the, the next question is, why is it so cheap? Which is a question I've been asking myself. 
<laughs> not to mention certain people at the event. Be brave. <laughs> Put the price up. <laughs> Do your guys think it's too expensive? Of course. They're biased. They're biased. They're going to say, it doesn't matter what the price is, it's got the no. automatic reaction. <laughs> Jeff, I need to take some lessons from you. <laughs> no, I haven't been very good at it either. <laughs>